Yes, thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you, here. thank you, Greg, for having me invited. Um, uh, I have to um, say hello as well from my co-author Christian Thomas from the Deutsches Textarchiv. We have already heard some of the services. Uh, Greg mentioned the OCRD project, which was originally based in the DTR and is a further development of, uh, of um, building up a historical text corpus uh, for uh, the German uh, language. But uh, this is not our topic here. Um, our topic here is uh, the ancient world. And um, um, my short title, Digital Resources and Services in the Context of the Berlin Brandenburg Academy of Sciences and Humanities, could have been even shorter. But um, short overview of what we are doing and what we have been doing uh, so far in, uh, in this field. Um, first of all, uh, the Academy. Um, the Academy is one of the biggest um, out of the universities uh, scientific organization in the humanities uh, in Berlin and Brandenburg, founded uh, in 1700. And it is a mix between the classical Gelehrten Societät, where the, the professors meet and discuss and produce new knowledge, and a working academy. So we have about 350 people working in the academy in about uh, 24 long term projects and uh, some. 10, 20 short-term projects as well. Um, so um, these 24 long-term projects are bundled in four centers. We have um, the Centrum Sprache uh, for the language resources. So there you can find, for example, the um, Deutsches Wörter, uh, Digitales Wörterbuch der Deutschen Sprache, Digital Lexicon of the German Language, or the uh, German Text Archive, and as well the Central Mittelalter, the Middle Ages, uh, where we have, for example, uh, church classes, uh, Corpus Vitriado Medievi, and uh, the Zentrum Preußen Berlin, Prussia and Berlin, where we have some, uh, some protocols of, of state ministers and stuff like this. And here, uh, more important, the Zentrum Alte Welt. So these are the projects who deal with antiquity and uh, ancient sources. So uh, these are the projects which we have in the old world. Some of these projects uh, are already going, uh, ongoing since some uh, 120, 200 years, like Inscriptiones Greke. Um, in the presentation, they are all linked to the uh, to the websites, and um, we see here Commentaria in Aristotelian Greke Byzantine, Corpus Coranicum, Corpus Inscriptionum Latinarum. You already see that we have a fable for uh, Latin uh, for Latin titles of our projects. The next one is a little bit uh, different: the Alexandrinische and Antiochianistische Bibel Exegese in der Spätantike. We call them short only Bibel Exegese. Galen als Vermittler, Interpret und Vollender der antiken Medizin. This is a following project of uh, Corpus Medicorum Decorum. Um, then as well the inscription is Greke, already mentioned, the Prosopographia Imperii Romani, and as well Strukturen und Transformationen des Wortschatzes der ägyptischen Sprachetext und Businesskultur im alten Ägypten. Um, this uh, project has been presented in uh, Berlin in October, so I won't, uh, I won't lose many words about this. Uh, if you have questions regarding this project, I could uh, give you contact to Maxim uh, uh, one of the many vaccines we have here, uh, he's working in the project directly. And uh, then we have as well uh, the tour fund, research tour fund of the uh, Silk Road. And last but not least, uh, the census. Um, as you already see uh, here, uh, these are many projects and they all have different Geschwindigkeiten, as we would say it in German, Tempo, in digitizing their scientific output. And we will see now some examples of, uh, uh, of how they, uh, how they uh, work with, uh, um, uh, with digital resources. And um, I have to say a big excuse. I wanted to make some really nice presentation in the last week. And what I can say from my point of view of the digital humanities is what we need is a stable digital infrastructure because last week and as well the weekend and as well today our servers always stopped at six o'clock in the morning working and then the half day my work was to restart all the services which we had so this is a very 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 uncommode or not a very nice uh, situation and therefore uh, my presentation uh, consists mainly of uh, of screenshots um, 
And as well, uh, to, uh, just to say one thing, uh, my main um, research project I'm, um, is the Corpus Coranicum. So uh, many of the um, slides will be uh, connected to this project. Um, now, we have different projects and we have different goals in each uh, scientific project and we have different uh, scientific domains. Um, we have the epigraphical um, projects, we have numismatic uh, projects, um, one which I didn't mention here, uh, uh, Trachean coins, for example, as a DFG project. We have as well critical editions, which where David has already uh, shown us uh, in his presentation some examples. We have prosopographies. And we have lexicographies, thus we have a heterogeneity of resources and digital approaches. Um, now, how can you get all these together, bundled together? Um, and as well, um, how did they uh, have, or how can they be transformed from working analog, uh, in, in analog and with paper to work with digital uh, methods? And therefore, the Academy um, founded in 2001, TELOTA, which is an acronym for the Electronic Life of the Academy. And this is where I am actually working in. And we were a, or we are an interdisciplinary working group and but began practically working with two uh, scientists in 2005. Um, and we are, or our um, goal is to help the project at the Academy in the digital transformation process. So as you have already seen, we have 24 long-term projects and um, with the time going and going and going, we have already become the biggest or one of the biggest um, infrastructures at the Academy. But as well with the, uh, with the, um, uh, with the well, the problem uh, that we are a project in the digital humanities, but we are working on infrastructure. So uh, our contracts are uh, pr um, are limited, but we have to build um, resources and tools that can be used as well after we have left the academy, for example. Mm -hmm. Or Telota has to become an infrastructure project in the academy, maybe. So, and this is one thing, um, uh, but uh, the other problem is um, the homogenization of the digital research proce processes where possible, because um, <clears throat> what is the tool most used in the humanities? The digital tool most used in the humanities? It is Word. So people working with Word and all our <coughs> old scientists and scholars which we have, they, are, uh, they cannot easily be uh, urged to work with XML directly. So this is one problem that we have to uh, solve. And, uh, but still we haven't got a 100% uh, elimination of Word, which is not possible. So we still have people working in Word and then we have to do the retransformation into XML, TEI and stuff like this. And the, uh, but as well, we are working on another, uh, on another solution, which I will show you afterwards. Um, for example, if you take the case study of digital editions, um, here we have a technical backbone, which is uh, exist uh, database. Um, then uh, the texts are all um, all um, stored in TEI XML, different uh, schema tasks, and the input is different. So we have Oxygen, we have Word, and we have databases. Oxygen is a popular uh, XML editor in the humanities. And the main question which we had here is how can scholars produce a valid XML TEI without noticing um, the curly brackets, which is already changing because um, new scientists or the new generation of scholars, they are not afraid about uh, curly brackets they want to use with them. So this is already changing, but we still have to take care of our 50, 60 years old scholars, which uh, still produce valuable and important uh, research data. And our scholars, um, our solution uh, is called EDRM. It is a framework for Oxygen, and it has a toolbar for the common philological world. I will show you some, um, some uh, first of all, the workflow of EDRM. So we have here our XML databases, where we save the transcription, the indexes, the schemata, and the X queries. We have, uh, via WebDev, um, um, we have an ed editing um, solution found, and then out of the uh, XML text, we built, uh, um, on one hand, um, with context, uh, PDF print editions, and on the other side, uh, the website, the digital, uh, edi uh, the digital product, which is when the server is running, uh, as well working, but um, they have to be running. So if you are trying to access our projects within the next days, Please don't do between 6 and 11 o'clock because I cannot guarantee that the services are running. <clears throat> 
But at 11 o'clock, we should be already uh, able to uh, work with this. So this is a, uh, um, a toolbar. And uh, originally, EDRM, the framework, was, uh, was made for, uh, for the Schleiermacher edition. Uh, thus, we have here mainly, um, uh, mainly the, uh, the links for, uh, for, for modern editions. Uh, to say, OK, here is a page break, and then you click on it uh, on the button, and you get the page break. Uh, here is a substitution, addition, and stuff like this. But most of these uh, of these uh, elements are, as well, used in uh, um, antiquity projects. Um, and this, for example, we have adopted for Commentari Aristotelem in Byzantine, uh, shortly CA. CAGB, as we call it in German. Um, there we have a description, manuscript description um, uh, of uh, following Harfling, Harflinger in Hamburg. And um, thus we have uh, here, uh, sorry for the bad screenshot which we have here, it looked better on my computer. But um, here we have uh, the possibility to, um, to enter metadata about the manuscripts. Uh, beneath, underneath, uh, uh, it's on purpose so small, so you can you can just see that it's totally XML text. Uh, yes, it is XML, uh, and this is what is produced in the background. And on the output side, we have then here a, a, a website which is uh, hopefully running. Uh, and this is a, a method which we are building for all or for most of our projects where we build digital editions or we want to store digital content. Um, here is, for example, uh, one description. Um, it's just for, for illustrating it. Um, uh, the websites all look the same. Here we have on the right side, we have a name list. So uh, there is much personal uh, or person's data collected. And on the left side, oh god, I can't read anything here. Uh, on, on the left side as well, uh, a longer transcription, uh, a longer description of a manuscript. And uh, as well, we have uh, links to Pinakis, so, or, or how it is spelled. I don't know how it is spelled. Pinakis, the web service, uh, French web service. So um, what we have been working in the past was giving the people a possibility to edit XML valid texts. Uh, the next thing would be to work more on the RPs, so on uh, data exchanging. Um, giving our data free for other projects to uh, use them and to reuse them, and as well to get integrate uh, their um, other information in our uh, projects. And there as well, we have the API. So we have, for example, um, in the CAVB, a beacon XML uh, data file, uh, not an XML, a beacon file uh, for uh, personal data, for uh, connecting uh, person's names with norm, uh, norm, normative data, like the fee of the virtual authority files, um, and as well some other, um, some other uh, interactions where you can reuse our data, which was collected in this project. Now, um, this was a new project, uh, and um, therefore we have the possibility to build up a completely new workflow. Mostly we have to deal with old workflows from projects which have already been working so long. And for example, the Inscription is Greke. This is um, um, a uh, project which we, uh, which we did in 2006 and still uh, it is the best which we have there. Uh, there is a, a Greek. Uh, uh, the uh, Greek inscriptions and as well uh, the German translation uh, from uh, by Klaus Halloff. Uh, as well, badly to be seen. Maybe I can improve these uh, screenshots. Sorry about this. Um, here we have as well the basic tagging, and as you see here already, maybe um, there is not that such uh, in-depth uh, XML tagging. So uh, what David showed us um, uh, with uh, with all the uh, attributes of one element, this is not uh, possible here. So we have only a very very flat hierarchy. Um, the Corpus Inscriptionum Latinarum is uh, mainly a I think I, yeah, a FileMaker database which is exported to HTML and is under revision. So uh, here you can um, uh, have a look uh, or find some information about the literature where some inscriptions are documented. Um, nothing more and nothing less. Um, the Prosopographia Imperi Romani, um, which is a classical prosopography. Uh, this is a um, uh, a, um, a, a Search mask for uh, for the um, for the um, uh, 
uh, for the people uh, in this database and uh, the state of this um, presentation is from October 2004, so it needs revision as well. And uh, this is a basic, uh, uh, very, very short uh, information, which is, uh, which is the output. Um, I have looked for Constantine and I get Aurelius Constantinus and then I get the, uh, the um, uh, ID in the uh, in the printed edition. So mostly, as we have, uh, this is a one another problem which we are facing. Um, we are financed by the um, by the program of the German academies, and um, the old projects which we have, they had the main goal to produce books. So they are paid for producing books and not digital editions or digital resources. So uh, the digital thing was not foreseen in 1970 when, for example, one project was uh, was to be continued. And therefore, we have uh, this problem that we have these different uh, different uh, tempi uh, in producing digital uh, resources. And this is the ex my execution for uh, this kind of poor uh, uh, digital project. Now, the big, um, which is not my domain, but um, it is quite impressive uh, what they produced digitally uh, and as uh, Greg has mentioned uh, we don't have to deal only with Latin and Greek but as well with uh, uh, with Chinese and uh, Arabic um, therefore it is, might be as well interesting the Turfan project the international dune one project which is as well already an international project British uh, library is working there and uh, our Turfan uh, society and they are having a quite a nice uh, digital representation with uh, um, with uh, the texts uh, of the Silk Road, which have been uh, digitally reunited in this Turfan project. Uh, the scans, uh, as well as fragments, uh, mainly fragments, uh, but here uh, is a complete text, and as well as some basic information, and I think as well there is a transcription of these texts as well, if I remember. Now the Beetle Exegese, uh, same counts here, old project, uh, uh, old uh, old digital project of us. Uh, they only have one commentary of Hippolytus uh, online. I don't know what they are exactly doing right now at the moment. And uh, the, le the last, or one of the last thing is uh, Galen. Um, what they did uh, already is, um, uh, is to put the scans uh, Oh, but only the scans uh, of the old uh, CMD volumes online, um, and you can browse through, that, through them. And there, um, regarding Galen, is um, the, uh, one of uh, one of the most popular input programs in Germany or in the German-speaking uh, world for uh, for text regarding the antiquities of the classical text editor maintained in the Austrian Academy of Sciences. And um, here we are working as well uh, for Galen um, in. Um, uh, because they are working with this classical text editor and uh, the CTE has since two years, I think, uh, a possibility to export TEI XML and we are discussing now with them the export possibilities uh, of the classical text editors. And uh, if we have fulfilled uh, this task, then we can build up a new website with their new editions which they have produced already digitally. <coughs> Now the census only, uh, only uh, I think it is mostly uh, commonly known here um, with uh, art uh, and, and um, uh, antique art. And now I come to my uh, specific domain. I start with a with a um, third um, uh, with a uh, project founded by the DFG. We have some satellite projects in our Corpus Quranicum, and this is the one uh, regarding uh, ancient Arabic poetry. So we have here the uh, we have two three anthologies which we have collected here, and um, they um, then we have here as well the uh, uh, collation. Um, the automatic um, of different uh, versions of these editions, and as well uh, the English translation of uh, this uh, uh, of this poem, um, based on the lines. So the lines correlate with each other as well. Uh, but this is what we are doing, uh, working on. We have some. Uh, we have many anthroponyms uh, mentioned in these uh, in this uh, poet in, in these poems, and uh, and as well tribes. And we want to. Uh, extract as well these informa the information about the tribes. Um, regarding tribes, we want then connect um, this information with this resource, which is as well a side resource, which a practicant, a 
what is practicant of English? Uh, well, a student assistant or less than a student assistant work on in three months, more or less. Um, we have uh, we have had the offer uh, to digitize um, the. Uh, file cards of uh, Professor Rebstock, who worked in the 70s on the Tübinger Atlases for the audience, the TAVO, and um, we have digitized them and extracted some local geospatial information. And uh, therefore we wanted, uh, or we want to uh, build up a gazetteer for the Arabic world uh, regarding the uh, old Arabic world, and we are working there as well with Pilagios together. Uh, and uh, here already we have uh, some, uh, some internet rep representation, which is in the pipeline pipeline so we have um, we have information about the price which have been uh, on the file parts of uh, Riefstock. then we have as well connections with other tribes in this area which are already computational uh, or which are already um, uh, counted by the computer so these are side projects, and uh, the last side pro uh, project, uh, as well for you, Greg, is the Rafi Talmon Concordance. Um, Rafi Talmon uh, died some years before, and uh, still you could use his uh, Concordance uh, via a Java application, but I think since three years or so it was not even um, usable, and so we integrated um, his concordance in our uh, web presentation, and we have here the morphological analysis uh, for the uh, for all the words in the Quran, um, and um, and as well um, we. Uh, but still, this is a very very beta uh, service which we offer here. Um, here is our manuscript collection. Um, what we do in the Corpus Quranicum, we uh, order uh, all information um, on uh, based on uh, on the surah and the verse combination. So uh, for each surah verse combination, you get uh, the regarding manuscript scans if they if they are available, and as well if we have it, um, we have as well transcriptions of these manuscripts, and um, there as well um, is. Um, Base, uh, this as well save the information if there is some textual uh, manipulation. So, uh, for example, uh, Rasur uh, lost text and stuff like this, which is on the right side that you can see. I'm very sorry if it doesn't look very nice here, but. I think it's the projector. Huh? I think the projector. Really yeah, and as well, um, the screen here is a little bit yeah. smaller. But I mean, you can download the uh, presentations and then you can have a deeper look on it. Um, as well, um, as well, we have uh, in the uh, in the um, with the history of the Quran, we have uh, the uh, strong oral tradition uh, and transmission of information, and there, therefore, we collect all these uh, uh, all these variant uh, readings, uh, which is. Uh, Mainly the reading, so not uh, not written sources, but uh, but uh, spoken sources. And as well, uh, what we are doing as well, we collect information of surrounding sources. So, for example, here I have a coin, but as well, we find uh, Syriac text in there, we find uh, Hebraic text in there, we find Coptic text in there, we find uh, even I think Sumerian text as well. We have some. Uh, in case that there is some mentioning in the Quran of some other sources, for example, in the Surah 19, Maria, the reference to Maria is very obvious, and so we collect all these informations there. <clears throat> um, and, uh, uh, and last but not least, uh, we produce a new translation of the Quran in German, uh, and um, we were thinking about, oh, wait a minute, huh? we offer this information uh, only in German, but uh, looking at our um, at our PIVIC analysis, where do our visitors come from, we see that we have many, many visitors coming from Turkey. So what we are working on, we cannot produce translations for all the scientific or scholarly, te scholarly produced text, but what we can do is we can um, produce or we can uh, we can translate the labels into other languages so at the moment we are working on an uh, on English labels and as well on uh, Turkish labels and then as well to give more people access to the information but it's only uh, I'm, I'm not sure about uh, how how we will uh, or where we will be in 2033 uh, with uh, web translations um, as well, what we did is uh, we integrated uh, a Zotero uh, library database, uh, which is uh, connected there. And 
as well internal links. Um, if you click on the commentary uh, on one internal link, you can you get a link to the other uh, mentioning uh, where in another sura verse combination. And finally, yeah, here as well we have um, here we have the printed edition of Cairo 1924, which is the uh, basis for all coming printed editions of the Quran. Um, here we have the scan, there we have the Arabic text, we have the transcription, and we have the translation. Uh, and uh, clicking on transcription on one word, we get already back to the Rafi Tamon competence, so the morphological analysis of the word pops up here. Um, Coming back to my uh, to my first thing uh, was uh, how do we, uh, how can people or how can the scholars enter data um, here in Corpus Quranicum we have a mixture between uh, SQL databases and uh, XML text files uh, in our exist database so what we have done here is uh, we have worked very very long last year to uh, get people able to work in XML and to produce XML TDI text. It didn't work in the end. It was a, a cooperation project with, uh, with, French, uh, with France, and uh, so it didn't work. So we, get, we, we took back one step and we said, OK, so enter your data in SQL databases and we transform them afterwards to XML, or valid XML data, uh, data. So this was one possibility, and uh, or one, the only possibility uh, in this case. Um, now, coming nearly to the end of my talk is, um, you have already seen in the ancient world, we have uh, many projects, some of them I didn't even mention, for example, the Glossarium Greco Arabico I didn't mention, because it is only, well, uh, we give the technical infrastructure if our servers are working, but the work is done in, uh, in, in some West German university, I think rural university uh, it is in this case. So. Um, we have uh, so many projects and um, no one at the moment can on one uh, few see all information which we have already produced digitally in the academy. And this was a problem for us, uh, or, or we identified this as a pro problem, and therefore we, um, we built up uh, a um, a um, DFG project which we called Wissensspeicher and uh, this is as well a little bit for you uh, Greg um, we have the Wiss uh, Wissensspeicher um, is, should uh, give or offer access to all the digital resources of the academy and not only uh, via a simple search engine but as well um, with uh, language technology and there we took Donatos um, uh, of, um, which originally came from Perseus worked on it. David worked on it and then uh, Malcolm Hyman uh, worked on it in the Max Planck Institute and um, then we took uh, took the technology um, so we have the possibility to have morphological uh, text analysis um, and um, and to get access uh, to all the internal um, and uh, data which we have, uh, for example, our digital library uh, will be researched then as well. Our archive has some, uh, some archival finding aids uh, on some external web services and stuff like this, and we want to integrate all this information into uh, via uh, advanced technology and to give, them, give access to them. <clears throat> Now, um, if the servers are working, there should be uh, there should be more than just browsing. Uh, there should be uh, some examples. But uh, today in the morning, when I looked at it, it didn't work. So, uh, but um, uh, I think uh, within some uh, months, the digital knowledge store will be as well online and available, and to have uh, give you um, the possibility to have a a, a, um, a search in a multilingual search and as well a morphological search. And uh, last but not least, as uh, my co-author Christian Thomas worked in, uh, works in the uh, Deutsche Sexarchiv in the OCRD uh, project, um, what we where we are as well um, integrated in uh, it, as the academy is, uh, and I don't know whether I will now get some uh, some poof poof, uh, is uh, the Claudine D project, uh, which is. Uh, language resources in Germany and we have, uh, um, as we have the German um, text archive and uh, other uh, valuable resources um, regarding the German language, we are one of the partners of Clarion D and um, there I have just uh, 
have a look today in the morning to the virtual language observatory whether I will find some information about Latin and yes I found some uh, Latin things and um, my question would be as well if we, I mean if we are going on with the global philology project how could we integrate these uh, uh, these uh, resources as well or how um, well how how connected are we with these big infrastructure projects which we have here in Germany like Clarin Dewey or Dar Daria thank you very much well, this, is the point, like, this is wonderful, Marcus, to hear all of this together. I always get dribs and drabs and allusions to the things happening in the DBAW. And this is the first time, the best overview that we've seen. And, and the, the, sort of, the situation that you're in is a, is a wonderful situation of desperate chaos, uh, which is to say you have all these projects that have evolved over the years. And have evolved, many of them have evolved beyond the point of thinking, we want to build our own website. We want to do it ourselves to the point of like, oh my God, you know, we have outmoded technology. We want to do new things. So this is, this is really something. We got a letter of support from BBAW for a proposal we submitted a month or so ago. And it said, the BBAW has, it has supported 795 Nobel Prize laureates. Uh, and we graciously condescend to support you in this proposal. So it is quite an impressive place. And it's in the most, one of those beautiful spaces in Germany or the world, you know, Jean So if you ever. Well, and as well, um, we have since one and a half years and for uh, hopefully uh, three and a half more years, uh, uh, a new president uh, who is uh, coming from the mathematics, uh, Martin Gretschel. And uh, Gretschel is a very big supporter of open science and open, uh, uh, um, open uh, access. So uh, I think um, we are uh, on a good way for uh, opening our resources as well for reuse in other contexts as well. So this is this is a going to be a foundational set of questions and services and, and thinking points. Uh, but this you have multiple languages, multiple services. How do you generalize? How do you set it up so that we have the resources so you're not worried about the server going down at six in the morning on Saturday? Uh, Even on Sunday. Our lives get something. 